Hello and welcome, friends. My name is Mr. Madsen, and I'm the school counselor at Duncan Elementary. And I'm going to share some lessons with you. These, this is a series of lessons from our second step curriculum, and it's titled the Child Protection Unit, or CPU for short. The focus of these lessons is on safety, how to be safe and stay safe. Before we get started, a couple of expectations. I want you to be an active listener, meaning I want you to find a place that you can listen to this lesson without distraction, if possible. Now I know during this time of, of shared workspaces and shared living spaces that it's difficult sometimes to do that, but I want you to try your best because you'll get the most out of this lesson if, there, if there's a few distractions. I also want you to participate just as if we were in the classroom, okay? So when I ask a question, I want you to think about it and maybe even answer out loud, okay? Um, even though I can't hear your answers, um, I, it'll give you more meaning as we do this lesson. And if there's an adult or an older sibling that can watch this lesson with you, that would be awesome. In case you have any questions, they would be there to be able to answer any. So let's get started. First question, who keeps you safe? Think about that for a moment. Who keeps you safe? If you thought the adults in your life, like your parents, grandparents, older siblings, teachers, principals, coach, you're absolutely right. They are all here to help keep you safe. Some of them watch after you and they help you te they teach you the rules about safety, okay? So the ways to stay safe, the three R's. So this poster may look familiar from last year or previous years, okay? And it's the ways to stay safe poster, or I call it the three R's because each of the three um, points all begin with a word that begins with the letter R. So let's look at the first, recognize, okay? Is it safe? Okay, and you'll notice as we focus in on this part of the poster, the student is recognizing that the girl is getting on a bicycle without a helmet. Apparently he has a helmet. He also rode his bike to school, but he's thinking, what's the rule? Is it safe to ride on wheels without a helmet? The answer is no. Okay. The second R is report. This is just like when we talked about Kelso, in that you report big problems, things that are scary and dangerous. Okay, Anyone that faces a big problem has to report to another adult. Even adults report to other adults because big problems are hard and they take many hands to try to fix. Okay. So, reporting is the second R. The third R is refuse. And this is meaning that you say words that mean, or actually R is the word, no. You're saying no, you're refusing. And looking at this picture, you can see she's got her hand out and she's saying, no, I don't want to be a part of the dog pile. If you look at the people in the dog pile, really there's only one person that looks happy. All the others don't look so happy. So she's refusing. She's using her words to refuse and say, no, I don't want to play that. So we have the three R's, the ways to stay safe. Recognize, report, and refuse. There's another rule that I want to remind you of, and it's the always ask first rule. Always ask a parent or the person in charge first. So I've got some situations that I want to share with you for us to think about. And no, they're not about minions, but I just thought this was kind of a funny picture. But these situations will want to use the ways to stay safe poster to think about how to respond. Let's get started. This is Samuel and his friend Terrence, and they are walking to school. Terrence overslept this morning, 
and Samuel just realized that they're probably going to be late. Samuel's afraid that he will get into trouble with his parents if he's late for school. Have any of you ever been worried about being late before? Yeah, it's not fun to be late. You walk in after everybody's getting started. Usually everybody looks at you. It's, it's an uncomfortable feeling. Terrence says that they can get to school faster if they cut through this empty lot. Samuel feels uncomfortable about going through the lot. It's not on the safe route to school that he promised his parents he would follow. Hmm. So Terrence says, I want to cross this lot. It'll be faster for us to get to school instead of going around the block. But Samuel is uncomfortable with it. Sometimes our friends are going to suggest us to do things that we're uncomfortable with. It's good for us to think about and practice ways to say no in order to keep ourselves safe and to possibly keep our friends safe. You can see on Samuel's face, he doesn't look happy about it. Terrence says if they hurry and cut through the lot, they'll get to school on time. So, is it safe for Samuel and Terrence to cut through the abandoned lot? Look at the illustration and think about what might be unsafe about cutting through the abandoned lot. Think about that for a moment. One thing I notice is there's a temporary fence. That's what that chain link fence on the post, it's a temporary fence. Usually construction companies use that to keep people out of an area they don't want them to go into, either because they're clearing an area out to build or they're building and they don't want people trespassing. So if that fence is up, does it mean that, hey, you should walk through here? Probably not. And we don't really know what's in this lot. Um, we, looks like there's a couple of puddles and maybe some bricks on the ground, uh, but we really don't know what's in the lot. But if it's fenced, it usually means stay out. Samuel isn't sure what to do. He thinks the lot might be unsafe. He or Terrence might get hurt. It's his job to keep himself safe, especially since there's no adult around to help. But he also doesn't want to be late for school. So the boys are in this bind. They want to get to school on time, but they don't want to do something that's like breaking a rule and get in trouble for it. Hmm. Have you ever found yourself in that type of a situation? Hmm. Samuel decides to use second step and refuse to cut through the empty lot. What can Samuel say or do to refuse Terrence? What do you think? What are some words that mean no that he could say to his friend? If you thought just saying no, let's go the way we're supposed to, that's the simplest, right? And maybe we can walk faster, right? Or maybe we can even run. It's possible, but stay on the path you're supposed to go on. Samuel tells Terence he doesn't want to cut through the lot, but Terence decides that they need to go that way anyway. So he doesn't listen to his friend. Samuel doesn't want to leave his friend, so he follows and goes along with Terence. The two boys run through the lot trying to get to school on time. In the middle of the lot, Terence screams and falls to the ground. He stepped in a hole and twisted his ankle. Hmm. Samuel stops and looks around. Look at Samuel's face. He looks worried. So not only did they not stay on the safe path, now Terence got hurt because they were trying to quickly cut across this path or this lot and try to save some time. But now it's turned into a bigger problem. There's no adults around to help and Samuel's starting to feel scared. He's worried about Terence and he's worried that they now they might get in trouble. 
What should Samuel do? What do you think? It's kind of a sticky situation, isn't it? Terence is in a lot of pain, and he can't even stand up. Think about how Samuel can report this situation to an adult and help his friend. How might you report it? If you thought he should call someone, you're correct, yeah. A lot of kids have phones these days, and maybe Samuel and Terrence would have a phone, and they could just call one of their parents. Even though they might get in trouble for not staying on the safe route, the parents would, one of them would come and help, most likely. If they didn't have a phone, I wonder what they could do. So, if either of the bo boys have a phone, they could call that way. If not, Samuel saw a, a store on the corner, and he could go there and ask to use their phone. Samuel knows in an emergency that he can call his dad at work. He always carries an emergency contact card with his father's number on it. So, that's a really good tip. Having a... if you. Uh, Having a card that has em emergency phone numbers on it is a great thing to keep yourself safe. Or if you have a really good memory, you can just memorize it. But often, when we're in a stressful situation, our memories can fail us. So it's best to have it down on paper. Samuel decided to go to the store on the corner. He, neither he nor Terrence have phones. So he goes to the store and he asked the owner if he could call his father. The owner agreed and lets him call. So Samuel's father is not happy that Terrence got hurt, but he's very glad that they called him for help. So even though they're in trouble for not following the safe route, his dad is really happy that he called him and knew to call him so that he could help them be safe. All right, here's another situation you might find yourself in. Imagine you're watching your little sister or brother, if you have one, if you don't, pretend you do, while your mom is running to the store to get something for dinner. Your sister starts to cry. She says she has a really bad headache. She wants you to get some medicine and make it go away, what would you do? Are kids supposed to give medicine to people? There's a bottle in the cupboard that says pain relief. If you were in this situation, what would you recognize as possibly unsafe? Think about that. What would you recognize? If you thought, oh yeah, I could grab that bottle, but that bottle might be for adults only, or I might give the wrong dose. Yeah, those are all possible unsafe things, okay? Or even though it says pain relief, is that what's really in that bottle? That might be something else. We don't know. How can you use the ways to stay safe in this situation? So you recognize, hmm, what do you recognize? Your sister has a headache, okay? And she's in pain and she wants you to help make it go away. Are there other things you could do for a headache? Your mom's coming right back from the store. I know she wants you to give the medicine, but do you know really what's the right medicine and the right amount to give? Yeah, you could recognize that giving her the wrong medicine is worse than trying to find another solution. Often what works for headaches is putting the person in a quiet room, turn the lights out, and a cold, damp washcloth on their forehead helps. And granted, they might still feel the pain, but it's better to wait for your mom to get home so that your sister gets the right medicine. Okay, I've got another one here for you. Imagine you're home alone after school. You're hungry and you decide to make yourself some macaroni and cheese. 
To make it, you need to boil water on the stove. Normally, one of your parents helps you use the stove, but there's no one home to help you. What do you do? So I don't know if you noticed, this, this is a special kind of stove. It's not an electric stove, it's a natural gas stove. And they usually require a lighter, or there's a pilot light, that lights the burner. So it's an open flame. Yeah, it's a lot more dangerous than an electric stove that you just turn a knob and heat comes out. Some of you might be thinking, why would I make that kind of mac and cheese? I would just make the kind that you put in the microwave. You're absolutely right. Yeah, there are safer ways to make yourself a snack, right? So you would recognize that this isn't necessarily the safest way to make yourself some a snack, right? Yeah, flames, fire, it's not safe. And without someone else there, an accident could happen quickly. And fire is really dangerous. So it would be better to find something else for snack, right? Yeah, I think this one is pretty obvious. You just recognize, okay, I can make something else or I can use, like you say, a microwave to heat up something. All right. I've got a short video here for you to watch. It's called I'm in Charge. I want you to watch it and then we'll talk about it when we come back. Okay, time for recess. Everybody get your jackets and line up. It's weird. Any day can start out like usual and then bam, something pops up and can really throw you for a loop. Like that time with Elena and Justin. Hey, Keon. Yeah? Wanna see something cool? Don't tell anyone. Firecrackers? At school? We're gonna fire them off at recess. For real? It'll be awesome. That's kind of dangerous. Come on, it'll be fun. Are you in? Um, no thanks. Oh no. I wonder if somebody will get hurt. Should I speak up? Hey, Keon. Everything all right? You know, you can talk to me about anything, right? Right. All right, well, go join the others outside. Have fun. What's up, Kian? I need to report something. I don't want my friends to get in trouble, but I really don't want them to get hurt. Elena and Justin are- I am in charge of my own self. I'm in 
Did you realize that video was a um, musical? Yeah, it's kind of catchy though. And it's all about staying safe, being in charge of yourself and staying safe. We're gonna talk about it next time, but I want you to think about it and until next time. And thanks for joining me today. And I want you to do the Flipgrid um, activity attached. Have a great day. <laughs>